To pass their genes along to the next generation, most animals need a partner. So in one sense, mating is cooperative, with each partner contributing half their DNA to the offspring. But mating also involves plenty of competition between the sexes. That's because both males and females are hardwired to try to make babies that can survive and reproduce. But they do this in totally different ways, ways that actually threaten the other sex's genetic legacy. For males, it's all about quantity. Sperm are easy to mass produce, and most males spend little time or energy parenting. So their best mating strategy is to breed in bulk. The more offspring they have, the better the odds that some will thrive. For most females, this strategy doesn't work because they have a limited supply of eggs and spend lots of time and energy caring for their young. Instead, females want to make sure that they can get the best dad for every one of their offspring. Some choose only to mate with the biggest, flashiest, or best behaved males. Others mate with multiple males and then choose a winner. Chickens, for instance, can selectively squirt out sperm from subpar suitors. But the pickier females are, the tougher it is for the average male to make babies. So males have evolved ways to limit females' discretion. In some species, males take their mates through brute force, while males in other species take the slightly less unsavory approach of obsessively following their mates around to keep other suitors away. Male squirrels try to ensure fidelity by plugging females' reproductive tracts with a fluid that hardens after sex, creating a sort of biological chastity belt. And male fruit flies go even further. Along with their sperm, they release a chemical cocktail that deactivates other sperm, stimulates ovulation, and kills their partner's future sex drive with an anti-aphrodisiac. In response, females develop counter-counter strategies to regain the upper hand, or wing, or paw. Some female squirrels, for instance, have figured out how to pluck out their chastity plugs. And in other species, like ducks and hyenas, females have evolved maze-like reproductive tracts that require their full cooperation to navigate. Males evolve in response, and the sexual arms race keeps escalating, which explains why some ducks have penises that look like this. In general, the more promiscuous the species males are, the choosier the females, and the more intense the sexual arms race. On the other hand, in species in which partners tend to have longer-term relationships and raise offspring together, like Homo sapiens, reproductive success for one partner also means success for the other. So the two sexes' baby-making strategies line up more closely. But even the possibility of non-monogamy is enough to spark some subtle subterfuge. Although seemingly romantic, a wedding ring is really just a gilded form of guarding our mate. Hey, Emily here again. Just want to say a big thanks to Audible for supporting Minute Earth. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks, with more than 180,000 downloadable titles, including Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. If you haven't heard of this book, it's by an investigative journalist named Annie Jacobson, and you should read it. Or download it for free on Audible and listen to Annie Jacobson reading it. Just go to audible.com slash minuteearth to sign up for your free 30-day trial. And then you can download Area 51 or any other book of your choice. Again, that's audible.com slash minuteearth. Thanks, Audible!